Well, things have certainly escalated in the last few weeks with the whole virus thing going on. And if you're like me, you're kind of limited to where you can ride. Now, a popular challenge going around the internet at the minute is the hashtag trackstand challenge. And I figured with most people either being stuck inside or if they've got a garden, having a very limited space to ride, this would be an absolutely fantastic tutorial to teach you guys how to do. Even if you're not a trials rider, I do highly recommend learning how to track stand. You can do it on any bike and it really does help with pretty much every single type of riding. Now, like I said, track standing is the most basic thing in trials riding. Therefore, most trials riders can track stand for pretty much as long as they want. I recently uploaded a video on my Instagram where I did a track stand for an hour and a half and I eventually got off because I need to go to the toilet. I've had a few people beat me, they've got to the 100 minute mark, so if you're one of them, fair play to you. Track stands are actually quite complex, there's a lot going on and there's a reason why most people actually struggle with track stands. So I'm going to try my best to break this down, show you a few different methods you can use to get better at track stands and fingers crossed at the end of this will get you guys doubling, tripling, quadrupling the length of time you can track stand. Now you can actually learn to track stand in such a tight space, which is why this is a brilliant thing to be learning while this whole lockdown is going on. You can learn this inside, outside, wherever you want, as long as you've got a space that you're comfortable with. And also I've got to say, I'm not going to be wearing a helmet today. This is like me wearing a helmet if I was just standing up or jumping on the spot. I don't feel I need a helmet for this with such a low level movement. If you want to wear a helmet, absolutely fine, but please no complaints in the comments for my lack of helmet. Before we get started, there's a couple of things you can do to your bike that will make life a lot easier. If you're new to track stands, I would definitely recommend flat pedals. If you end up losing your balance and need to put a foot down, having clips means you're more likely to topple over. I know I've done it when I've had clip pedals before. I know other people do it. So if you want to do this safely, get some flat pedals on. Another thing that will really help is having some good brakes, especially the front brake, which you'll see in a minute why. And also find yourself a gear ratio that's fairly light, but you can pretty much do this in any gear. A lighter one will make life a little bit easier to learn with though. The techniques I'm gonna show you should translate onto any type of bike, so don't worry if you've got a road bike, a BMX, downhill bike, a trials bike, just a trail bike, whatever you've got. As long as you've got brakes and a drive chain, you should be able to do a track stand. Okay, I think that's enough intro. I'm gonna jump on the bike, turn to a voiceover, and let's get on with it. If you've never track stand before, the first thing you need to determine is which foot forward you are. I'm right foot forward, and this means that in my later tips, I'll be turning my bars to my left for easier balance. If you are left foot forward, then you'll turn the bars to the right. If you're not sure what foot forward you are, then try riding as slow as you can and see if you're more comfortable with one foot or the other. If you're still not sure, you can always practice either foot forwards, which I recommend anyway, and become ambidextrous. If you have space, then slow riding is an excellent way to start practicing. See if you can come to a stop and then set off again without putting a foot down. Once you're comfortable riding really slowly, the next step is to use something solid to rest the front wheel against. A wall is ideal. At the point the front wheel touches, apply pressure to the forward pedal to push against the wall. Keep the brakes off. The harder you push, the more stable you will be. The back foot is practically weightless. I can even take my foot off the pedal with no change in how the bike behaves. I find having my forward foot level or slightly lower than level is best. Try to stay loose if possible. Flexing your ankle is a good sign you're not too stiff. Going straight against the wall is tricky, but if you're able to balance, then this is a good time to experiment with moving different parts of your body and see how the effect balance. Try moving your hips from side to side and see how it feels. And then maybe your shoulders. Generally though, a lot of balance is done with the knees, so experiment moving them about and see how it affects the bike. If you're managing to keep the balance with pedal pressure and using your body to counterbalance, then try experimenting and loosening your grip on the bars, see how it feels. You could maybe even take a hand off and try different grip positions. It all helps stay loose and can be a fun challenge. Remember all this time I've had pressure on my forwards foot pedal and I've not been using the brakes. If I release the pressure, the bike won't stay against the wall and balance becomes very difficult. So I just showed you going straight against the wall, 
However, trying to balance with the bar straight is very hard. In fact, I can barely even get started. Turning the bars makes a kind of triangle and gives a lot more stability. You can lean the bike a lot more before losing balance, so from now on I'll be teaching with turn bars. Next we're going to do the same drill against the wall, only this time with the bars turned like mentioned. This should make things a lot easier if you're struggling with the last step. If you have space you can ride into this position, or get your bike into position first and then step on. Just make sure you step on with your front foot first. I find a roughly 45 degree bar angle to work pretty well, but I always encourage experimenting and seeing what effects other angles have. If you now try moving your weight from side to side, it's a lot more stable. You've created a triangle rather than a straight line. Also notice that I turn my upper body with the bars. This helps have a little bit more control in the later steps. It's also possible to use the back of the wheel, although this is a lot harder. The previous tips are the same, the front foot is creating pressure against the wall. I'm not using my brakes, although it is possible, it's just not as good a technique. As well as using your body to keep balance, adjusting the pressure on your pedal can adjust the bike's position too. More pressure makes a bike lean right, less makes a bike lean over to the left. And if you're left foot forward, then these are reversed. When track standing, most of my balance is being controlled by my forward's foot. Even if I take a hand off, I can still control the bike and keep my balance. Once you feel like you've mastered using the wall, it's time to increase the difficulty. I'm going to use a 12 kilo kettlebell, but you could use a chair with some weights on or anything smallish and heavy. The smaller and lighter, the bigger the challenge. Rest your front wheel against the object the same as you did with the wall. The idea is that you want something that will move if you apply too much pedal pressure, making you control the forward foot and body weight. A good way to see if you're doing it right is to have your back foot on the floor, hands off the bars and see if you can keep the bike upright only using your forward foot. Remember, more pressure makes a bike lean right, less leans left. It's exactly the same when on the bike. Subtle pedal pressure changes combined with knee and hip movements will keep you upright. If you're confident, you can even try removing all pedal pressure and roll away from the object and either try and hold the balance or just roll forward back into the lean. Using a wall or a weight is a good time to try using the opposite foot forwards too, either on the bike or with the one foot method. In trials, it's important to be equally good with either foot forwards as sometimes run-ups could be short and you need to start off bad foot forward. Ready to make things harder? Reducing the size and weight of the object increases the control needed to maintain balance. As before, we're still using pedal pressure to keep the bike upright, only now the pressure adjustments need to be far more subtle. One thing to note is I do use my brakes to step onto the bike. Not using the brakes would be too much pressure on the pedal and be very difficult to keep the bike under control. Most control is coming from my forward foot, but notice the knees are also being used to help keep me balanced. I'm also slightly using my hips and although it's hard to see, I'm rolling my feet and ankles on the pedals as a micro balance adjustment too. Again, no harm in trying with just one foot to try and find the control. A small object really does help to control how much pressure to use. Too much and it will just slide. And if you rely on a front brake, you'll not be able to use pedal pressure to lean the bike back if you go too far to your back foot side. All right, let's take away all help. Either from rolling or just stood, when you're ready to balance, turn the bars roughly 45 degrees, and that's to the left for a right footer and vice versa. If stepping on from standing, remember it's easier to step on with brakes locked. Turn your upper body to roughly match the 45 degree of the bars. I find I'd probably actually turn my body closer to 20 degrees, so do whatever feels most natural. Now without an object to help push against, we have to find other ways to get the same effect. The easiest by far is learning facing up a slight slope. This is where having outside access is handy. Most flat areas will have at least a tiny slope somewhere. My patio has a very slight slope towards the house and a couple of broken tiles. Both these features can be used for our advantage. Instead of using pedal pressure to push against a weight, I'm now pushing against gravity. 
I'm using all the same techniques as before, but now I allow a bit more movement forwards and backwards. The control is still mostly in the forwards foot though, to the point where my hands aren't actually doing too much and I'm able to let go one at a time. Any decent crack, bump or small object can be used just like we did with the small weight. When you ride trials, using any kind of bump can be a real energy saver. After riding trials for so long, you can really get a sense or feel through the pedals and detect the smallest incline or object to lean against. Track stands are most difficult on perfectly flat surfaces or facing down a slope. Gravity is working against you and there's no object to push against. This is where having a front brake helps. Using a combination of weight shifts and front brake, you can effectively turn the brake into a temporary object to push against and regain balance. Often people assume I have a fixed wheel bike and can pedal backwards, when in fact it's just a combination of a weight shift and releasing pressure on my pedal whilst pushing against my locked front brake. Highly exaggerated, but if I feel I'm losing balance to my right, I simultaneously lock my front brake, give the bars a push, shift my weight in the direction of falling, and apply and quickly release pressure on my forward foot. Done right, the forks will flex slightly and spring the bike underneath me, bringing my balance back centered above the bike. If I lose my balance to my left, I add pressure to bring the bike back under me. Opposite instructions if you're left foot forward. Hopefully by now you're getting comfortable balancing. Don't worry if it's a struggle. Spend more time on the early steps and it will help the later ones. There's always ways to make things more difficult though. Try having the bars turn the other direction or take a foot off. Or how about a foot and a hand? You could use your back foot on the front tire as a complement to the front pedal pressure. Even one handed if you like. Or the same thing on the back tyre. Although two feet was too much. But a hand on the tyre works pretty well. These tips should work with nearly any bike. Although it is harder on a bike with only a rear brake, in this case try to point uphill where possible. Okay, I hope I've done a pretty decent job of explaining some of the complexities that come with doing a track stand. It's not just as easy as lock your brakes and balance. There's a lot more fine tuning going on, slight shifts of the weight, slight weight placement on the pedals, slight feathering the brakes. There's a lot of just minute little things that if you don't get right will make track stands a lot harder. To slightly recap, I think the most important things to remember is you're not rigid on the bike, you're not locked brakes, you're allowing the bike to have slight movements underneath you. If you can find an upslope, it makes life a lot easier. Then you can basically just use your pedal tension to keep your balance. And if you're struggling to do a track stand, don't be afraid of going back against the wall and building up from the start. I'm confident that by using the technique against the wall, then reducing the size and weight of the objects, that will really, really help get your track stands absolutely dialed the quickest way possible. If you are a trials rider, then I highly recommend going out and riding natural. That's when you really start to notice all the little lumps, grooves, cracks, that you can get your wheel in there and get some support from. And if you are right foot forward and turn your wheel to the left, Sometimes if there's a little knobble or nook or cranny that's to the right, turn your bars to the right. Do whatever you can to get the most stable position. I'd love to know down in the comments if this tutorial did help you. If you are timing your track stands, let me know down below what time you got. I think the world record is about 15 hours. And to be honest with you, I don't have the patience nor the bladder control to go that long. But if you're up for a challenge, Firstly, you can try and beat my hour and a half. If you fancy going for the world record, good luck to you. I really hope that you are able to track stand indoors, get your practice up and hopefully not being driven insane through lack of riding. If you'd like to see more videos, then please hit the subscribe button. Help me get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you want to see longer videos released earlier, then please consider hitting up my Patreon. If you want some merch like I'm wearing here, I've got a range on aliclarkson.com or if you just want to donate without any obligation, then I have a PayPal link. 
All of these things will be linked down below and I really do encourage you to take part in help support this channel, give you guys some free videos because at the minute with no shows going on, YouTube, Patreon and these other methods are literally the only income I have at the minute. So any help really is appreciated. Anyway, good luck with your track stands and I will catch you next time. So take care everyone. I'll see you later.